Glenn Wright II, a financial planning industry leader, a researcher, a critical thinker, noted author, and philanthropist. A business professional who strives to make the best decisions for his clients, employees, and family. Glenn's formative years helped him realize his gift to understand and help others with their finances. That mission began with his mother and her financial needs. I remember I was um, 10, 11 years old, and um, my parents were actually going through a divorce. And my, uh, I guess the, the first mistake I saw was the attorney that worked for my mother. I asked her, we had two homes, one in the city and one in the suburbs, which home would you like to keep? Well, uh, he recommended that you keep the one in the suburbs. Well, uh, my mother's a school teacher, uh, the suburb, the, the home in the suburbs was a lot nicer, but it had a bigger mortgage. And uh, long story short, she couldn't afford that. We were out of the home, and I lived with um, family members going from place to place. And I, I also saw poor financial decisions um, there as well. And so my goal became, what can I do to help my mother? So I started reading anything that deal with statistics and finance um, so I could help my mother become a better steward over her finances. And from there, um, I realized working at the banks and other financial institutions, that there are many other people just like my mother who wanted to do the right things, who were educated in many other disciplines, but still needed help financially and, um, and financial planning. So this was what I was, I know I was meant to do. That early life experience molded him into a financial professional wanting to help others with a seek to serve attitude. That's why when a family member reached out to him for help in their business, he was willing to help. And um, in 2003, I um, partnered with a family member of mine who was uh, with a real estate firm. And um, the goal was to buy homes, fix them up, and sell them. Um, I'd already had a uh, my own financial firm for a couple of years at that point, and um, that was pretty successful. And uh, my goal was really to help help them. So we had done that. Uh, it actually worked pretty well the first uh, couple of deals. So they wanted to ramp it up. To protect his investment, Glenn began researching the Detroit housing market. He discovered that the recession had impacted the housing market in Detroit severely, and now might not be the best time to help secure a bank loan for his family member's house flipping business. But as I thought about it, and when we were starting the process, and I looked at the landscape of Detroit, things had really begun to change. The recession really started there. Um, housing um, prices began to fall, uh, unemployment began to rise. So um, I changed my mind and I just said, no, this is no way are we gonna do this. Um, it just didn't make good financial sense at all. Thinking that that was the end of his involvement in helping them secure financing, Glenn assumed the family member pursued other opportunities to secure a bank loan. He noticed business was successful, even without his help. That uh, family member, along with the banker, still proceeded, in fact, got a larger line of credit, and uh, I was very close to them. So I saw these new cars and houses, and uh, I originally just thought, wow, business must be really doing well. Glenn never thought about the deal any further, but a year and a half later, he discovered something disturbing. I, uh, I applied for a rewards credit card, and uh, I was denied. So I was certainly surprised when that happened. And so I pulled my uh, credit report, and I realized that there was this loan out there uh, to a deal that I clearly didn't sign, that I had said no to. Uh, to all parties and that was really the beginning of, of this process for me. Contacted uh, the bank. I uh, wanted to uh, find out what was going on and I quickly found out that um, the banker as well as the family member were, um, had done this uh, really behind my back. In, in 2005 I um, completely backed out of this deal, um, didn't want any part of it at all, and um, well, what I did not know was apparently um, the banker and the family member 
actually, some type of way, um, made the deal happen. The banker was ultimately fired, found out that they, um, there many other people, or well, there were a few other people who had gone through a similar scenario, like myself, unfortunately, and, um, and then they both immediately filed for bankruptcy protection. So in order for them not to, uh, I assume, go to jail, they of course sided with the bank and the bank just wanted their money back. So who do you go after? You go after the one that uh, maybe has, uh, or they perceive to have a few dollars. It was now the end of 2006 and Glenn began the lengthy and expensive process of defending his credit. From the end of 2006, when I discovered this, uh, this was a long drawn out process that really wasn't over until the end of 2013. So we're really talking six, almost seven years of my life that, um, and uh, over $200,000 in legal fees um, that I spent just to protect myself. And um, that's time I'm not gonna get back and money I'm not gonna get back. Um, uh, going through a process that I was clearly a victim and should not have even started. The bank tried to make a case. But because of my uh, background, me being a highly decorated financial planner with uh, degrees and designations, that there was no way that this could happen to someone like me. That there was no way possible that I could be a victim of identity theft. Uh, but the truth is, it can happen to anybody. Um, Anyone can, who obtains your information can sign up uh, a loan or get a credit card or um, any of those things in your name. So the key is to make sure that I protect myself and we protect ourselves moving forward. Seven years and $200,000 was a tough lesson, but Glenn learned a lot from this experience. I learned a lot about my faith, uh, more about who I am as a person, um, who how, really how to protect yourself. Um, that's what I've learned. So, you know, we, we think that identity theft may come from some spy that's across the world, um, but it can also happen to someone who's right next to you, who sees you each and every day. And um, that's, that's what I learned. Um, I think about what would have happened if I didn't have the money. What if I don't have $200,000 to, to, to pay the legal fees? Uh, it could have it would have ultimately damaged my career, potentially, um, for something I, I didn't do. And if I had some identity theft protection, um, then we would have, I would have saw this early. When I applied for the um, credit card, that was about two, almost two years after they had done this. So. Um, if I had identity theft protection, um, I would have found out immediately and everything would have been different. If identity theft happened to this financial professional, it can happen to you. To learn more about identity theft and how Worth Financial Group can help you, contact them today and begin protecting your financial future.